What's up Chaos Shinobi here? Summary, Naruto is neglected by his parents and his sister. So, he decides to run away. But, what powers does he discover and what friends does he find along the way? Chapter 1 It was a bright day in Kanahagakura and the Cage's family was enjoying it outside in the afternoon heat. Hey dad check this out a little girl screamed out happily as she lifted a blob of water about the size of a hand out of the water and molded it into a ball hovering in midair about a foot off the water's surface. This little girl was called Narumi Uzumaki Namikaze who at this moment was about 8 years old. Who was already about 4 feet 7 inches. 4 foot 7 inches it is going to be like this for my story means feet means inches. She had a slim figure already seeing as she has been training almost since she began to walk. Plus. How much fat could possibly be on an 8 year old future ninja? Also, she had long red hair that was as dark as her mother's and crystal blue eyes that showed complete excitement. Her dad was heard laughing and then quickly bent down to tell her good job you will be the best kunoichi ever. Besides your mother of course. With a big smile. After Minato says this his wife shows up in the doorway looking proudly at Narumi as well. Too bad not everyone in the family was enjoying this moment. For Narumi's brother who was only five minuets younger than her leaned against one of the trees in their compound enjoying the shade until he looked up at his family. This boy was Naruto the only one of the family that never actually considered himself to be in it. He was tall for his age at around 4 feet 8 inches with unruly golden hair and like his sister shining blue eyes. Course Naruto was in shape as well for an 8 year old except for the fact that he had several scratches that have yet to heal from the village's demon hunt that happened this morning. You see both him and his sister have the nine tailed fox sealed into them. Except that Naruto has the soul while Narumi has the Chikara. Course everyone still only attacked Naruto for that reason because they thought that Naruto would eventually become possessed by the fox. Che, my family looks as happy as ever and they still don't even notice me. Too bad for them if they won't help me train then I will just continue to do it by myself in secret. Naruto thought to himself then pulled out a small book called Sealing for Advanced Sealers and began to read until it was finally time for supper. Where his family doesn't even call for him in the just walk into the house and close the door leaving Naruto to realize himself. Of course when they all sit down everyone except Naruto began to chat happily while Naruto just sat at the far end of the table and finished his ramen. When he did he simply put his bowl into the sink and walked to his room. Of course he wanted more but he knew already that they would only give it to him if Narumi didn't want it which never happened. You see Narumi was a spoiled kid who always got her way when they were growing up she would always give ideas for stuff to do. Though when Naruto tries to pick something else they always went with Narumi's idea leaving her to sometimes brag and contradict her brother just to mess with him. With this and the fact that she was being trained while he wasn't Naruto slowly began to isolate himself and not really bother trying to befriend anyone. Though Naruto was smart. If anyone actually noticed that they would quickly realize the greatness Naruto was destined for but sadly the only one who ever did was Kurama. Otherwise known as the Nine-Tailed Fox. You see Naruto met her when he was four. Of course he only did because Naruto accidentally got hit which causing him to be knocked out. Flashback. A four year old Naruto was trapped in an alleyway where he was quickly pummeled into a pulp thus making his world go black. Why does this happen to me? I never did anything to them so why do they hate me? Was the thought Naruto screamed out in his mind. I am so sorry kid he heard after that and suddenly he was ankle high in water with what looked like a sewer. Where am I and who are you? Naruto screamed out hoping for answers course after he said that he soon came to find a giant room that a giant bars cutting the room in half with the kanji for seal place upon a slide of metal that stretched between two of the bars. Whoa what is this place and why is this here Naruto couldn't help but think. For starters this is your mind or at least the representation of it. And these bars are here to keep me inside of you and still away from you. A deep voice told him that seemed to echo around the room. What this is my mind? Wait then why are you in here? Naruto asked the voice hoping for more answers. Of course after he asked that two giant red eyes that had black slits going through them looked directly at Naruto from the other side of the cage. I am in here because this is my prison. The prison I have to stay in because of a misunderstanding. The voice said then slowly the cage began to light up showing the giant orange body of a fox QB was all Naruto could think when he saw this then suddenly screamed out why are you in my body? Wait seeing as you are in here you must be the reason that I am hated. Yes youngling I am the QB and the reason why the village hates you. But it is not completely my fault. As I said it was a misunderstanding that put me here. But, that is a story for another time. Anyways yes I am so sorry that I have to cause a young kid so much pain but it is also your village's fault. For they don't know the difference between the storage seals scroll and the kunai held in it. Also, not even demons would torture a little kid for any reason. Still I am so sorry QB tells Naruto in a sad voice. It is okay QB it is clearly not your fault like you said. I just have one question for you Naruto told the fox surprising it. 
WW what you forgive me just like that. How is that plus? Ah, uh, whatever I will think on this later but for now what do you want kid? QB asks Naruto. Simple I want you to train me. I mean you must be strong so train me to be so strong I can protect my special people. If I ever have one plus, I want to be able to kick some major ass Naruto screamed out thrusting his fist into the air causing the QB to chuckle. Sure kid I will train you to make you as strong as possible. Though I would have even if you didn't ask because I refuse to have a weak holder and so you don't have the villagers beating you up every day. Just know that it will not be easy and you probably won't like me too much after I am done with you. QB says with a sadistic smirk causing Naruto to gulp, oh, yes I nearly forgot if you are going to train under me then you should know my name which is Kurama. QB says happily and then slowly morphs down into her human form. That's right Kaibui as a girl people only mistake her just because her voice sounds so deep she is constantly mistaken for a boy. Of course she was nowhere near a guy with a heart-shaped face, deep red hair, the same blood red eyes that radiated her power, not to mention her figure. She had a perfect hourglass figure with a double D chest and A but that was the perfect shape. Altogether she was a goddess on earth. Beautiful Naruto couldn't help saying when he saw her human form which got a small blush from the QB. This is the form that I will be training you with. Now could you tear a corner off the seal so that we can talk without having to have you come in here. And while we are at it could you change the layout of this place a bit for me too I don't really like staying in a sewer. Just change it by wishing it to be something it is your mind. QB explained to Naruto and with that Naruto did just what she asked and then transformed his mind to a luscious field filled with trees, small animals, and even had a small house for Kurama. Also, Naruto changed the seal into a collar for her. Much to Naruto's displeasure seeing as he wanted to get rid of it completely but needed the key if he wanted to get rid of it without killing them both. And after he did that he went back into the real world and slowly made it back to his house. Such a good kid it is too bad this village can't see him for the kind and smart person Naruto-kun is. Wait did I just say kun? No I couldn't have anyways I wonder if I should tell him about what will happen if his sister uses my power. Oh, well I guess there will be plenty of time for that later I guess. But, I just hope that I can train him enough before it happens. Kurama thinks as soon as Naruto left then began to explore her new cage. Chapter 2 I hereby order you to actually begin instead of some fool's rambling, and so it started. Flashback end. For anyone wondering if first flashback is still on in this chapter and because I thought it would be funny. Naruto was always in his room when he was inside of the house. For it was the one spot where he had his own realm besides in stories. You see seeing as his parents were always fussing over Narumi and her stuff Naruto pretty much could do whatever he wanted to his room because no one besides him entered it. So Naruto just sat down and relaxed. It had been years since he started to train with Kurama and she was a very psychotic teacher. Though thankfully nothing was done that would stunt his growth so he was stuck doing push-ups, sit-ups, running, squat thrusts. And then is his free time which was quite a bit he studied chakra and other important things for ninja. Like Kenjutsu, Fuinjutsu, and Ninjutsu. Though he had no skill whatsoever in Jinjutsu seeing as he still had a large amount of chakra due to his Uzumaki blood. Of course his skill was greatly in Fuinjutsu which he guessed was because of it being popular for both families. So. Naruto right now was working on another one of his seals that he plans on using at later times. This time it was a seal that will launch out weapons or jutsus at people when they breach a certain area around the seal. Of course the seals he makes are slowly being made because of the fact that he doesn't have a seal master as a tutor and the fact that he is still in the explorer level of sealing but he hopes to change that soon. Of course there is school things to do as well but really the school is a joke. I mean really half the classes don't even affect ninja whatsoever. That he still sleeps through most of the classes. Anyways after working a bit more on the seal he puts it away and goes to bed but not before a small chat with QB. Kit when do you plan on putting your plan into action Kaibui asks when Naruto enters her zone. Don't worry I need a little bit more time until I have everything I can get from the village. If it goes well it will be started on my 12th birthday. I mean it is the perfect time to do it. No one watching me as I leave this reached place once and for all taking my father's just two and a few of the kin just two along with me. Plus, I need to slowly take the money I need to survive from the vault. But don't worry Q-chan soon we shall be gone Naruto responds happily. Okay Kit just hurry it up I don't want to see these villagers hurt you any more than they already have. Plus, it will finally bring your father down a pedestal hopefully if it is shown he treated a kid so badly that he ran away. Yeah, right like my father could fall from that in fact I bet he will get even more praise for getting rid of the demon brat. And don't worry I can escape the villagers now that I have some power under my belt I just have to be discreet. Whatever just hurry up Brad hey, you know I will Q-chan and with that Naruto allowed dreams to take him over. 
you better hurry up because I don't know how much longer I can hold out was Kyuubi's last thoughts then she too went to sleep. Now as the years passed Naruto still was independent but he made some good friends along the way like Itachi and his mother, Tsume, Hana, and surprisingly Kurunai as well. Which was an odd beginning. Flashback. You see they meet when Naruto was running away from the villagers at age 6 where he ran past her and instead of her helping the villagers she put them all into a gene just for attacking a young child. You are Kushina Sensei's son aren't you? She asks while the villagers are still in her gene just to just standing around with glazed looks. H high is all Naruto could tell her still surprised someone helped him. Well then why are you out here it must be getting close to lunchtime I bet your mom is worried about you. And with that she drags Naruto back to the Namikaze household. When she gets there she knocks on the door and then waits for a bit until Kushina comes and opens the door. Oh, Kurunai what are you doing here? Oh, well anyways come on in we are about to have lunch join us. Kushina says happily and then allows Kurunai to enter the house hardly noticing that she has brought in her tired, slightly beaten child home. Course Kurunai just put it off figuring that Naruto told his mom he would be out playing and got injured that way and waited to enjoy lunch with her sensei. What surprised her was while the family was happily talking to each other Naruto was left out. What this isn't right why isn't Naruto enjoying the time with his family? She thought to herself but still finished the meal. After it was done Kurunai goes up to ask what she wanted to for a while Kushina sensei did you know why Naruto was out by himself and got chased by a few people? What no I had no idea. I mean we were training Narumi all this morning. Kushina tell her. Then why wasn't Naruto being trained as well? I mean he is a part of this family as well. Oh, that is because me not Okun and me think that Narumi needs more training because of the fox so, Naruto just has to wait a bit. She answers simply. W what but you could still train them both at the same time. Kushina says confused. No Minato has already explained that. We need all of our attention on Narumi. Naruto will just have to wait. No way that is just stupid of course you guys can train both of them. Kurunai says starting to see the problem. Well I have to agree with Minato this time I mean the Hokage knows best after all. I mean he is our leader Kushina says fully convinced. That is just stupid. I mean this is obviously wrong. Naruto needs just as much attention as your other kid Kushina sensei. Kurunai screams out. No I have to go with Minato he is Kushina starts until interrupted. I don't believe this. You turned into what you hate a fangirl. You are literally just hanging on everything he says. But you know this is wrong I don't care if he is the cage he still is wrong with this and if you agree with him then that just proves just how much of a fangirl you are. Goodbye Kushina Kurunai screams out then leaves a surprised Kushina. That is the first time she hasn't called me sensei. Is all Kushina could think as she watched Kurunai walk away from the house. Flashback end. After that Kurunai helped Naruto whenever she could and they quickly became friends. Course no one else knew about this because Naruto wanted to make sure his friends weren't hurt by the village as well. Time warp. It is now the last year of Naruto and Narumi's ninja schooling. And of course Narumi's popularity has just increased as she aged and became more and more like her mother. She now five tall with her hair now braided into a ponytail traveling almost all the way down her back. She looked more womanly now still with her slim figure but now budding B-cup breasts, making her the most desired girl in the class. She always had to turn down dates from numerous guys and of course everyone liked her in the class. Though her real friends were Ino and Hinata. Though she now wanted to spend time with her brother. Narumi finally realized that Naruto was not really being treated more so she tried to spend more time with him but the other kids always go in the way and he would be gone before she could get to him. Though a few more people did try to be Naruto's friends but it didn't last. For they only became his friend to try and get his sister to notice them more so when Naruto found that out he quickly ignored all of them and from that point on just stay to himself even more. Making him the only one who didn't try to go for what the class calls the three goddesses. Meaning Hinata, Ino, and Narumi. For all three of them have become quite beautiful for their ages but sadly they never dated anyone leading a few people think that they went the other way and were secretly dating each other but had no proof. By the way both Hinata and Ino looks just like they did in the anime class. Just that Ino is not a hopeless fangirl and Hinata is not as shy. So, what is your plan this time Narumi? Ino ask. Course she just answered with a heavy sigh saying I don't know all my plans have failed thanks to those stupid boys getting in the way I don't even know if he will accept it anyway. I mean what if he hates me already for totally ignoring him for so long? You see Narumi has been trying to spend more time with her brother for the last month but each try has failed. Well I am sure your next one will work out. Besides you are his sister he has to forgive you right? Hinata tells her trying to cheer her up. Yeah, you are right I mean we are family. Narumi says a bit happier but was really wondering if he even thinks that he is a part of our family still with all we done to him. Well I will just have to make it up to him. 
You see Narumi still loves her brother except she finally got over what she calls her bratty years. And of course her friends decided to try and help her but the village is making it really hard seeing as they wanted to keep everyone away from the demon brat. Though she never really understood why they called him a demon while she had all the chakra of it. I mean wouldn't make more sense for the one with the power to be more like the demon. Was it possible that it could have been the other way around? Thinking that she leans back and looks at her brother who was sitting in the back row. Now Naruto has grown up quite a bit he became a muscular 5 feet 4 inches figure with his hair slightly longer golden hair looking more like his father. Except he added dark red highlights to his hair. Though he still has his sparkling eyes except that they now seem deep and cold. He looks so sad but how can I make it up to him? Wait exclamation mark dot dot that is it let's see if I can get this to work. Narumi thinks happily and then silently waits for class to be over. Meanwhile Kushina was thinking along the same lines. She was shopping at a random store and she decided to buy something for both of her kids. Hmm, I know Narumi would love this grabbing a scroll on a new water just to. Okay then now for Naruto, wait what does he like? Wow I am such a horrible mother I mean I know everything about Narumi but I know nothing about Naruto, maybe we have been ignoring him. Well I will change that we are going to start training him in the family styles. Yes, that is perfect we will start him on their birthday in two days. And with that she walked out of the store after grabbing a random ninjutsu scroll and went to find Minato. Minato was sitting at his desk thinking of his family or more importantly the way it is not complete hmm, I told Naruto I need to train his sister first but right now she is really good in the styles. Plus I am sure it will put him back into the family because we kind of were leaving him out of the group. So, I guess that I can tell him it will be his birthday present. Yup, that will make everything right again I mean who wouldn't want to learn our clan skills. Minato thinks happily then looks back to the paperwork he has to do still now let's see another one of the civilians cases saying that the demon hunting group should be released from punishment due to service to city. He read out loud then with a sigh put his approval on it Naruto forgive me but I need to make sure that the civilian side of the council and on my side. And with that he took his break hoping to see his family. Until a figure comes through the window. Jiraiya what do you want? Minato asks his sensei. Hey. Nothing just came to tell you that the frogs gave me a prediction. Jiraiya says instantly catching Minato's attention. Oh really what is it? The hero of this world will be a ninja of many powers. The heritage brought from two great powers. Brought in by a leaf but soon starts the fire. Till the goal is complete and destiny met its desire. The kid of power gaining the powers and support of many in power. Till their time comes and they put in the power. Soon shall be the end of the world we know. For a new time is on their shoulders. Brought up from the dark of the world soon the light shall breach and beat. Jirai reads off of a scroll he has and then put the scroll away. Now the frogs want this kid as their summon so is it okay if I give Narumi the chance to become their summoner? Jirai asks already knowing the answer. So, you really think that it is her? Is all Minato says. Of course I think it is her she is from you and Kushina are probably the strongest ninja in the village so I am pretty sure it is her. I mean who else could it be? He said like it should be obvious. A, whatever if you want to go ahead and give it to her if you want but it is her choice to actually sign it. And with that Minato finished his work a bit more and left for his a homemade meal. At the house Kushina decided to talk to her husband. Honey I have been thinking about Naruto. Kushina tells Minato. Really so have I. Really so, what have you been thinking about? Kushina asks. Well we have been ignoring Naruto for way too long so how about we start his training in our styles and justice. What do you think? I was just about to suggest the same thing so let's just wait for the kids. And with that they started to make dinner together until they finally heard the door open up. Hey mom, dad I am home. Narumi says loudly. Welcome home honey. Um, do you know where your brother is? Kushina asks happily. You mean that he wasn't home already? He was gone from school before I could even try and find him today. Narumi says. So. They decided to wait for Naruto and while they did they filled in Narumi on their idea which brought up Narumi's mood. It took a while but soon the door was heard opening again and they saw an injured Naruto walk through the door. And Kushina surprised him by screaming out Naruto what happened. Nothing I just injured myself trying to climb a tree. Why are they worrying about me? A confused Naruto thought. Thankfully they left the injury at that even though they were pretty sure he was lying. So, after that they all went to the dining room table to eat the meal which is of course ramen. Of course yet again they surprised Naruto by seemingly waiting for him to eat before they started what is going on here? Never have paid attention to me before why are they now? Was all Naruto could think of as he ate. So, Naruto how was your day at school? Kushina asks seemingly curious. Fine was the only answer they got. After that there was a length of silence where no one really knew what to say. 
Till they were finished with the meal and Naruto got up and put his bowl into the sink and was about to go his room until he heard his mother call him back. And soon enough he was brought into the living room and was sitting in the seat across from the couch. Naruto you know how it is getting close to your birthday right? Minato starts. Yeah Naruto responds not exactly sure where this is going. Well starting the day after it you will be training in our styles with your sister. Minato says happily and then waits for Naruto's reaction. That's his great Naruto ni you finally will be training with me I can't wait and I bet you can as well, right? Narumi adds happily and energetically. Though what surprised everyone when they saw his head move slowly up to look at them with good blue eyes and simply say no. Why way w what you said no but why? I mean our family's power is wanted by so many and you would be one of the few to learn it. Minato stutters out in disbelief. I asked you when I was younger if I could learn them and you told me no. In fact I asked several times so finally I got over you guys. And if you didn't understand that let me simplify it for you I don't want to learn anything from you anymore. Naruto spits out at them leaving them stupefied. WW what how is it possible for there to be a person not wanting to learn mine and Kushina's styles I mean we are the two most powerful ninja here so of course people will want to train in our style. But, our own son refuses how is that possible? Minato was screaming in his mind. Hey, I bet he wasn't expecting that AQ Chan? Naruto says happily. Yes kid I mean they have not treated you well all your life but now they want to make it up to you. So, what are you going to do now? I mean are we still going with the plan? QB asked. Yes of course we are I mean they had years to get to know me and now they want to get to know me? Hell no. Our plan moves on as scheduled and soon we both will be gone from this horrible place. Naruto tells her a bit irate. Oh wait I almost forgot to ask when do I get that surprise you told me about Q-chan? Naruto. I have already told you several times you will not get it until just before we leave QB says being a bit annoyed. Sigh. Fine I will wait. Naruto says disappointed which tempted QB into telling him but she refrained from doing it because that secret was a bit too big. Sorry Naruto-kun but I can't tell you about it because I don't want you to know that I plan on using all of the energy I have left in this zone. After that I have no idea what will happen to me but at least I will give you a fighting chance in this world. And after that Naruto went back to the real world where all his family was still in shock so apparently he wasn't gone too long. Well if that was all good night Kushina-san, Minato-san. Narumi-san Naruto say clearly forcing himself to have a neutral tone in his voice as he gave a quick bow and then walked to his room, leaving his family in utter shock seeing as he not only didn't want them to train him but he also just acted like they weren't a family. Has he gone that far into depression? Kushina and Narumi ask themselves. Wait this couldn't be my fault for letting the village take their hatred out on him. I mean the village can't be that bad on him right? Yeah, he is probably in shock of such an amazing opportunity. Minato thinks to himself. And with heavy hearts for the girls and a knowing smirk from Minato they all went to sleep as well. After all this they tried several things to interact with Naruto which all failed leaving them even more upset. While Minato just waited patiently for Naruto to come running up to him begging to learn his style, finally it was the night before. Finally after what seems like ages I not only have the perfect escape plan but I have the perfect time as well. Naruto thinks happily as he was about to fall asleep until he heard QB tell him to stay up. What do you want QB? Naruto asks her seeing as he wanted to get some good sleep before he had to go. Kid it is not only time for your present but also I will tell you my actual name. Kyuubi tells Naruto sadly. What but you told me it was Kurama? Why did you lie? Naruto quickly asks wondering if she didn't trust him. Uck, this is why I was postponing. You see Kurama is the name I got when I became the Kyuubi. It is given to each new Kyuubi for an unknown reason. Though I personally think it is because those old coots don't want to learn new names. And before you ask yes the QB has changed but it is only after every 100,000 years. And no I will not tell you my age, you never ask a girl that. Hey, just wanted to add that if a girl reads this take it as you want but I mean no harm. Anyways for real names they are only given to the few you trust and you are now one of them Naruto-kun so my name really is Natsu. For your gift you need to go into your sister's room without waking her up. What are you trying to get me to do? Naruto screams out with a small blush on his face. Sigh. When did you get so perverted? Anyway no I need you to reach my sealed demon chakra. And to do that you need to allow me to take over your body while touching her seal oh was all Naruto could say then went to his sister's room to do what QB asked him to do. When he entered her room he saw her crunched up into the smallest ball she could. Plus you could clearly tell that she was crying for quite a while. Man I feel like I should comfort her. Wait what am I saying she is one of the ones that made me want to leave. Naruto thinks as he rolls her over so he could slightly and touch the seal. 
Almost immediately after Naruto's subconscious was pushed back and Natsu was in charge. Okay then now that we are this far I will tell you my plan seeing as you can do nothing about it I plan on using the last bit of my retained energy and some of my chakra from her to give you a bloodline, Natsu said with a sad smile. What and no I don't need a bloodline why don't you just stay with me and that would be good enough? Naruto asked hoping to change her mind. So, sweet, but no I need to do this you see even if I didn't give this to you I would only last about another month before I went away anyway. You see a soul is not meant to be away from its chakra so I have only been surviving by the chakra I collected from the chakra residue I left and a bit from the death seeing as she decided that it wouldn't be right for me to go back into hell without all of my chakra. Besides now that I am in control you can't stop me so goodbye Natsu said looking about ready to cry. I am sorry Naruto-kun I wish I could have stayed with you but I can't besides even I don't know what will happen after this Natsu thought then began her ritual. Soon after she started the seal on Natsumi leak out a bit of demon chakra that traveled up Natsu slash Naruto's arm and dispersed around her slash his body. After about 5 minutes of this Naruto started to feel the energy pull up inside of him making him feel his chakra coils increasing and his very DNA being transformed. Though it was not the easiest thing to go through so in his mind Naruto was screaming in pain as he felt the chakra burn at his very essence, changing everything so slow that it seemed like an eternity. Till finally it stopped. And Naruto finally looked around Natsu's room which was quickly crumbling away and on the other side of the room was a semi-transparent Natsu. Natsu, please don't leave me. Naruto says tearing up. I am sorry Naruto-kun but I had no choice. It would have come to this eventually so, why not when I can give you something for it. Now don't get sad I have managed to unlock the Uzumaki's rarest bloodline the Rinnegan. Now you need to master it yourself but I left a scroll on it in your room seeing as I was. Kind of taking you over when you gave me consent while you were semi-awake. Now the scroll is under your bed hidden under a floorboard. Now, go, goo, goodbye, na, nar, naruto K. Kunatsu said as she faded away from Naruto's mind. Goodbye Natsuhime was Naruto's last thought until he brought himself back to his room and fell asleep. When Naruto woke up he sat depressed for hours until it was close to the party. Well, I might as well continue the plan I will mourn for her later when I am free just like she would have wanted. Naruto thought then went downstairs to get ready for their party. So, Naruto went to the bathroom and was surprised what he saw in the mirror. In the mirror was his regular face but his eyes instead of being blue were a dark purple and there was a single black ring going around his pupil. So this is Rinnegan eh? Oh wait that's right I need to get that scroll and study how to use my last gift from Natsu. Naruto thought then after getting cleaned up ran into his room to pack everything he needed up into a giant scroll and wrote his final note to his family course he had to wait until the party stared to get his time to leave. And of course the party started with everyone focusing on Narumi without even thinking about Naruto except for a few who planned on giving him their gifts to him later. Well that is all I need I can hear the party starting now it is time to go Naruto told himself and started to walk to his window leaving a sealed envelope on his bed. And without turning back he jumped out his window without an emotion shown on his face and didn't even turn around goodbye my friends he thought as he pictured the few people in the village he cared about. A while later. Naruto speed past the wall of the village and was a mile away from crossing the border when he decided that he should rest a bit before continuing. Meanwhile at the party everyone was having a lot of fun at the party until it was time for the gifts which were plentiful. Though most of it was just toys and other things Narumi wanted there were also ninja stuff for her as well till finally she got to Jiraiya's gift to her. Here you go Gaki Jiraiya said happily throwing down a big box that landed right next to her and when she opened it she saw a giant scroll which made her eyes light up is this she asked until Jiraiya quickly interrupted yes it is I would like you to sign it if you would be so kind and I will teach you all about summing frogs. Yeah Narumi screamed out happily. Can one chan sign it as well? Narumi said hopefully. Oh oh of course he can Jiraiya said a bit surprised by her asking. Yes, now he will have to train with me then I can finally apologize to him Narumi thought in pure bliss. Then Kushina realizes Naruto was not downstairs and asked Itachi to go and get him which he did happily. Until he walked down moments later looking depressed while holding a piece of paper putting everyone on edge. He walked up to Minato and Kushina and showed them the letter which made them both frown. Ambu all of you go out and find Naruto he is trying to leave the village. Minato screamed out and soon blurs were seen running around the village looking for Naruto. Naruto where are you going Narumi though sadly as she looked out the window seeing as she was told she couldn't go search. Oh, stop worrying he is better of out there than and here Gaki a voice scolded her. What who are you? How did you get into my mind? Hmm. Nope don't feel like maybe after Naruto kun escapes this hellhole the voice told her mockingly. Come on Naruto it may be my fate to be forever locked up here but you still can escape yours the figure thought as it ignored Narumi. What? No I insist you tell me. 
I mean it is my mind so tell me oh I want to know and how you know Narutoni. Narumi yelled out and stomped her foot down in frustration bah, I am not in here by choice so I don't really feel the need to answer for you. But, as for Naruto-kun it is simply the fact that I am one of his closest friends who would be going with him if I could. But, seeing as fate brought me here to be stuck with you, Gaki. I have to settle with only my gift going with him. The voice told her. Fine. But I want to make it clear that we will be talking after Naruto ni is brought back. Narumi yelled out still acting childish. Bah, he won't be brought back I promise you that. The voice said completely believing that it was right. No he will be brought back to me exclamation mark dot 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 wait who are you anyways? I mean are you related to Inochan? No I am afraid I am not you see when I gave Naruto his gift I used up all of the chakra that I managed to regain. Seeing as chakra regeneration is very slow when you are in seals. Anyways I didn't know what would happen to me after that but apparently something brought me to the largest reserve of my chakra. So we are stuck with each other. The voice told Narumi. KKQB. In the blood. Well soul, you get the point QB says with a sneaky smile on her face. What? How? Wait if you are here does that mean that bro is dead or something? Narumi started freaking out. Baka human I just told you I came here because I used up all my chakra I had in him besides it is not like you ever cared about him anyways. QB spat at Narumi. WWH what I cared about him. I mean I just realized how bratty I was acting to him about a year ago and have been trying to talk to him several times but either got too nervous or got stopped by fanboys. I mean I was just about to tell him how I felt today right after the party. Narumi screamed at QB. Che, it will be a cold day in hell before I believe that crap you just told me. QB told her in disgust. Though if you really feel this way then I wonder what those feelings are she thought with a perverted gleam in her eye. It doesn't matter what you say Baka QB I still will find him and tell him how I feel even if he actually does leave this village Narumi thought determined. Plus Naruto plus. Naruto decided to start to move again after a few minuets of resting. He was close to the border but still he had to make it over it to finally be free. So, after quickly picking up his small camp he started running as fast as he could to the border and soon was nearly at the end of the tree line signifying the edge of Kanahagakuri yes I made it. Naruto was thinking happily until he heard a voice telling him to stop coming from behind him. Shit. Naruto thought and then saw who jumped in his way. Naruto-kun why are you leaving? Kurin I called out crying. Sorry but this village is not for me you and the gang will always be my friends but I just can't handle the villagers crap anymore. So, please let me go Kurunai-chan. Naruto said really hoping she would let him seeing as he really didn't want to fight her. Fine Naruto-kun if you really think you have to leave I will let you but if you forget about us I will make sure I come and put you under a gene just who even you can get out of. She told Naruto still crying a bit. Wow, I really need to figure out a good way to give off emotions and other random stuff. Man you really don't realize what you will need until you actually start one. Oh, yeah and this one is so annoying because I keep wanting to write in first person due to the last story I was working on, thank you, and I promise that I won't forget you all. Please tell everyone I will miss them. But, this is something I need to do Naruto said and with that he ran past Kurunai and officially crossed the border leaving his old life behind him. Plus two month later plus, man, it has been a long time since I saw some action. Naruto told himself as he did some early morning stretches. Then he quickly went down to the river and took a quick bath and got ready. Course as soon as he did he heard a loud group start making a lot of noise and decided to check it out. Plus with the group plus. Ha 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 what a good haul we got from that last village I mean look at all of this alcohol and food. Not to mention all of the entertainment we found a random thug told his friends who were all sitting in a circle as he pointed behind him at the cage on wheels where there was about two dozen girls sitting in ripped clothing cowering in fear as close to each other as possible. Their ages ranged from what seemed to be 12 to about 30. After the guy said that his group laughed with him utterly terrifying the girls. Oh, no why did this happen to us? One of the girls whispered to herself while holding her legs close to her body. Don't worry I am sure some night will save us just like in the tales we were told. Another of the teenagers whispered to her, Bah, you can't hope for that girls, just face it we are going to live the rest of our lives being these sleazeballs personal fuck toys. One of the older ones whispered rather coldly. And with it they all started to whimper a bit until a bottle shattered on the bars. Hey shut up in there we will give you something to make noise about later. One of the guys said with a lustful smirk on his face. Actually I think I am going to go for the first pick if you guys don't mind one of the other guys tells the group then opens the cage and pulls out a 13 year old from the cage by the hair and began to walk out into the clearing a bit more. He then threw her to the ground and told her happily you better be ready for your wood to be rocked. And was about to go up to her when he suddenly found a kunai piercing him between his eyes immediately killing him. 
leaving him to fall on a screaming girl whose eyes were open in shock and horror. What the fuck just happened? One of the other guys screamed out when he saw his teammate die. Then he saw a figure come out from on a tree. Huh? That must be the fucker that did that let's get him. He screams out and then they all go after the figure. Plus Naruto POV plus. Naruto was in a tree watching the group drink and looked on in utter disgust. Then he saw that they were dragging out a girl and decided he need to help and with that he threw his kunai at him and hit him dead on right between the eyes. And with that he ran into battle. Course he was a ninja so they didn't stand much of a chance so he just went right into them holding two kunai. And just started to slash at them. Right when he got up to the first one he ducked under a sword slash aim to cut him in half. He then stabbed upward and pierced through the man's throat then he ran up and stabbed two more in the heart. Altogether he slaughtered the entire group without getting injured at all. I don't know why these thugs wouldn't run I mean they saw me kill all their friends why didn't they? Naruto asked himself then began to walk through the camp to get to the cage. Halfway to the cage a man randomly jumped out from behind a tent slashing with his katana. Shit. Naruto screamed out as he tried to doge the attack but due to the close quarters he got a cut across his chest course that guy didn't last long seeing as he soon found a slash on his throat finishing him off. Damn it I got too careless here. Naruto complains to himself. After that guy was dead Naruto examined his wound and found it was nothing serious so he went to the cage quickly. Course the girls didn't know what to think about seeing this guy kill all of their captures. Course the only one that could do anything finally got out of her surprise and grabbed a katana from one of the dead thugs. SS stop I I will and not let you h har harm my friends she stuttered out clearly thinking she was about to die. Wow I don't know why I jumped in front of him I mean I could have ran. No I would never forgive myself for at least trying to help my friends. Oh. Well I guess we all will share the same fate again she thought as she stood in front of him. Course he did what none of them expected he laughed at her. Wh why are you laughing at me I am serious I I I will kill you if you try anything. Ha 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 you actually think I am going to harm you. No I just hate people like that. Here let's unlock your friends and bring you to your village eh? Naruto asks her while spinning the keys on his pointer finger. What? All the girls scream out in surprise. Kaos Naruto used it as time to walk past the girl with the sword and opened up the cage. So, come on let's search here for some equipment then get going. And hopefully we can find some clothes for them Naruto thought to himself with a blush. Eventually the girls got over their shock and figured they had nothing to lose and ended up just looking around with Naruto. And they looted all of the food, weapons, medicine, and clothing. So by the time they were done all of the girls were in a bit more covering clothing except it was all too big for them so they really just wore the biggest shirts as dresses. Um Mr. Naruto, Naruto Ozuke's Naruto told them. Well Naruto-san I found a medical bag so how about I take care of your wound? One of the older girls asked him. You see after getting to know Naruto a bit they began to trust him a bit more. Sure that would be great, Naruto said and then took off his shirt. Which made all of the girls blush a bit when they saw his chest. He is hot is all that went through their mind. Course the one of the girls quickly ran up to bandage him up blushing even more than ever being so close to him. Course after Naruto has bandaged up and everything around camp was picked up. Including the bodies which were burned up with a fire just to. It was already getting late so they all went into the remaining tents and fell asleep. Man I wish I could see Natsu-chan again I wonder what happened to her. I hope she is still okay but I guess I might never know Naruto thought and then went to sleep. When Naruto woke up he tried to move and found his arms had something heavy on it and looked to find two girls with their heads on his arms. What the fuck? I don't remember getting into bed like this Naruto thinks to himself and then found the girls starting to wake up. Um what happened here? Naruto asked groggily. Making both of the girls get a bright red blush. Well you see we heard rustling in the forest and um, got a bit scared so we came to get you and sort of accidentally fell asleep again. One of them told him. Please buy it I really don't want to tell you that we just wanted to thank you for helping us and found you asleep. They thought as she told him that. Wow what a simple lie ah well not that it matters much to me Naruto thought and left it at that. Hey what were you three doing one of the older girls said as she saw the three walk out of the tent making all of them blush up a storm. And no nothing happened Naruto told her completely embarrassed. After that they all left to get to a nearby town that the girls came from. Finally home. One of the girls screamed out, wait here and I will make sure they are safe just in case Naruto told them and then walked ahead of them until he heard. Stop right there. One of the other villagers screamed out when they saw Naruto. The whole town then came up to Naruto holding all they could get as weapons. So, they had pitchforks, kitchen knives, and other farming tools. We won't another one of you bustards take any more of us our girls. One of them screamed out. Wait I am no Naruto tried to explain until he was interrupted by one of the remaining girls. Where is my daughter? After that they were all about to attack until they heard a girl scream out stop. 
And then they saw the girls come out of the trees and then they all ran up to the girls. Are you all okay? Yes we are fine thanks to Naruto-kun. The girl said, Naruto-kun? Who is that? Oh, well we will thank him later but for right now just hold on while we protect you from this guy. One of the guys tells the girls making everyone sweat drop. Wow we really have a smart guy here don't we? Everyone thought until one of the girls spoke up. No you idiot he is the who saved us. Oh, sorry then guy. The guy said rubbing the back of his head making everyone sweat drop again. Thank you for that how can we ever repay you? No need for any payment I just am thankful I got rid of bastards like that Naruto told them and then they all went to party for their good fortune. After they partied they all went to sleep for the night. Are you sure you need to leave? You could always stay here. One of the villagers asked Naruto hoping he would stay. Sorry I got to go I mean I am a ninja if I would stay it would only bring trouble. So, I have to go goodbye. Naruto told them. And then the hero of Julepur village was seen walking out of the village. Plus two months later plus, all civilian towns heard about the white fox. A man who saves all who need it when thugs or someone else comes to harm the innocent. He is said to wear a white robe that hides all of body except for his blue eyes that are said to radiate power. On the back of his robe is the kanji for fox written in gold. It is said that he holds the legendary Rinnegan and is able to beat even ninjas. Ino read out to the rest of Konoha 12. Narumi took Naruto's spot. Doesn't that just sound like the perfect man? Ino said with a dreamy sigh. Um, sure if he is even real. Sakura screamed. Yes, it seems highly unlikely that there is a random vigilante running around the world helping people. Shino told them in his monotone voice. Yeah, and what about his Rinnegan thing they say he is what is that anyway? Kiba asks to get answered by Shikamaru. The Rinnegan is one of bloodline that is said to be one of the best in the world. It is said to give the user access to all five elements and a sixth one called gravity. It is shown to be active by the user having purple eyes with black circles on it. And that is about all that is known about it. Geez you really are a walking dictionary aren't you? Kiba asked just getting Shikamaru to mumble something that sounded like troublesome. Well I guess the only way to find out is if we find him out on a mission, Choji said in between eating his chips. Whatever if I see him I will force him to teach me all he knows for I deserve it because I am a Nuchiha elite, Sasuke said with cocky smile. Yeah right team. The only thing you are an elite in is being a cocky bastard, Kiba said and they all laughed except for Sakura. That said Sasuke just did his normal thing. Sulking to himself, Narumi that guy might just be Naruto-kun if the saying is true, Natsu said happily. Really that means we have a chance to finally get him? Narumi asked happily getting Natsu to smile as well. You see in the time the two had they both talked quite a bit and eventually became friends and eventually they told each other how they felt about the blonde. So, they decided that if they meet him Narumi would put him into her mind zone so that Natsu can explain to Naruto. Course he probably wouldn't be around Kanahagakur so they had to get a mission away from it as soon as they could. Plus Naruto plus. Naruto now is traveling around to various villages dressed up in all white with a white robe that had the kanji for fox on it and for a 14 year old he was very strong and handsome and for each town he visited that gave him a bunch of fangirls. Not to mention that every civilian knows his he never asked for the name he just went after the people he hated which were, rapist, thugs, killers, and basically any other person with ill intentions. You see Naruto decided to try his hardest to make as much peace as possible in the world. So, he was praised by all of the villagers, and feared by all of the villains of villages and towns though not too many people got to see his katana which for right now was just a plain one seeing as he didn't have the money to get too fancy with it but it did the job just fine, but no one saw it except those who were dead seeing as he has it sealed to his belt. Plus, some ninja knew about him. But they didn't bother trying to find stuff about him seeing as he wasn't in a village's bingo book. But that was just because he didn't piss off any villages yet. Though if he was a missing ninja he would probably be a B-class missing ninja. But he still doesn't have any village to belong to. Ah, sometimes it is good to just relax Naruto told himself as he sat on a random tree branch in a forest that was not close to any villages or people. Nothing better than being in a completely secluded area. I mean there is no one around to worry about it feels so good just to relax for once. He thought to himself until he looked at his supplies and saw that it's all very small now. Darn I have to go to a village after all. Naruto thought with a sigh and then jumped down to the ground and leisurely walked in the direction of a random village. Skip till really close to village because who really wants to read about walking where nothing happens? Ah, almost there Naruto thought happily and then heard a gasp behind him. W wait you are the white fox? A man that looked to be in his 40s asked in amazement. Hmm, yeah if that is what you villagers call me now, Naruto said like it was not a big deal. Wow I never thought I would see you in person. 
Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Yoshiko and this girl behind me is my little daughter Ayaki. It is a pleasure to meet you, Yoshiko said happily and then finished with a small bow. Meanwhile the girl stood behind her father unsure of what to do. Yoshiko was a middle-aged man who was probably in his early thirties how wore a simple brown kimono while Ayaki seemed to be ten or eleven and wearing a dark red shirt and sweatpants. Nice to meet you guys Naruto responded kindly. So, what are you going to the village for? Yoshiko asked. Nothing really. Just getting low on equipment. Naruto calmly told them. Ah, well you have come to the right spot then. Welcome to Yosh Market home to all your gear and many other things, Yoshiko said happily. Sigh what my father meant was that we own a moving market that sells almost anything, Ayaki said with a sigh. Ah, well sure I guess but may I suggest waiting till you get in town to try and sell someone something. Naruto told them with a small smile. Hey, yeah that might be a good idea Yoshiko said a bit embarrassed. And with that both Yoshiko and Ayaki jumped back onto their cart. Um, do you want to lift Fox San? Ayaki asked Naruto. So, with a shrug Naruto just jumped onto the top of the cart. Oh, and you can just call me Naruto by the way. And with that they began their friendship. Plus one month later plus, Naruto, Yoshiko, and Ayaki became good friends as they traveled around the villages and right now were traveling in a random forest. Hey Naruto-kun how much farther is it to get to the next village? Ayaki yells up to Naruto. Hmm. It seems to be still about another half an hour Naruto tells her. Really that far man we sure are going slow I mean wait what is that Yoshiko says then was interrupted by the group hearing a random noise in the forest. Which put all three of them on edge. Then all of a sudden a teenage girl in a blue kimono with long red hair running as fast as she could. Whoa what's the rush? Naruto called out to her. When he said that she stopped and answered between pants can't, stop, being, chased, need, to, escape, get. Help. After that Naruto was about to ask what she was escaping from until two tuning that appeared to be from the village hidden in the mist. Crap, where did that bitch go? One of them asked. I don't know but we need to find her. You know how much we can get for capturing her? Wait there she is. The other said and then charged at her only to be stopped by three kunai that were thrown right in front of their faces. What the hell? They both asked until they saw a blur of white come in front of them. Wait a moment there why are you chasing this girl anyway? Naruto asked calmly. We are chasing that bitch because she has a bloodline. Everyone knows that bloodlines are evil and must be destroyed plus we will get some good money for that bitch from the cage. Now move out of the way so we can get the slut already, he yelled at Naruto. Wow so they are chasing her for no reason and plan to make money using her that is it I am so gonna kick their asses. Naruto ragged in his mind. Ah, well so you are hunting bloodlines does that include this? Naruto asked them while he activated his Rinnegan with a smile. Yes exactly like that. One of them screamed and then started to do hand signs. Water dragon he screamed out and out of a giant jug he had on his back came a giant dragon. Seeing this Naruto didn't even blink but just put out his hand and screamed divine push and the dragon hit the force of gravity and blew up. Which surprised both of the guys so, while they were still in shock Naruto held out his sword in one hand and held out his other hand beside the hilt. Divine pull and brought one of them to his sword. Squelch. The man still had the look of surprise on his face as the sword pierced through his rib caged killed him. After he died Naruto let him slide of his blade and looked at the other one which had a look of pure horror on his face. Shit is all the guy could think as he stumbled a bit then ran as fast as he could away from Naruto who let him run to check on the girl. Course before that he simply looked up to his traveling companions and apologized for them to have to see it. Ah, well those guys deserved it Yoshiko told Naruto and with that Naruto just nodded and went to check on the scared girl. Course he couldn't help but marvel at her beauty first. The girl was about a year younger than Naruto with a perfect hourglass figure ample breasts beautiful shining eyes and long red hair. She was a true beauty to see and he couldn't help but blush a bit. Are you okay? Naruto asks her sincerely. I I am okay she tells him still a bit surprised by what happened. That is good now can you tell me your name? Naruto says kindly. This guy just got rid of the people that chase me. He must be really strong. Though can I trust him? Ah? Well I guess I can't really beat him or flee from him because of his strength. So, I guess I can only try and get him to the Mists Rebellion. I hope he does it will be nice working with a hot weight what am I thinking I just met this guy and I am already thinking of him as boyfriend material what the hell am I thinking. She thought to herself and then decided to try and befriend him. My name is Mai. She finally told him. Ah, well Mai-san my name is Naruto. So, why were those guys chasing you anyways? Naruto asked her, well you see I am a Janan from the village hidden in the mist. And right now we're in the middle of a rebellion. Because our cage has begun to try and get rid of all of the bloodlines in the village. So, 
us with bloodlines and those who agree with us are trying to overthrow the cage to rebuild the village back to its former glory. So, will you please help me Naruto kun Ma asked him hopefully with the puppy dog no jutsu. Yea I would hate to see a bastard rule over an entire village so I will help you in the rebellion. Naruto told her after taking the time to think about his options. Then Naruto turned to the rest of his group. Sorry, guys I just have to do this I promise I will see you guys again eventually so after I bring you to the next village I have to leave to help. Are you kidding me here we have to go with you I mean this guy sounds really bad so he deserves to be taken out of his position besides it has been a dream of mine to just have a store in a single village and settle down. So, I am going to talk to the rebellion leader about loaning or trading my item stock for that business in the village. So, what are we waiting for let's go. Yoshiko told him with a yaki nodding behind him. And with that they began to travel to the village in hopes of a better future for it and themselves. Plus with Naruto's family a week after Naruto left plus. How is the plan going with this problem we faced? Minato asked the civilian council. It matters not that the demon left. The people still blame him instead of Narumi. One of the council said confidently. How can you be sure that no one in the village has decided to hate my daughter instead of Naruto? Minato asked them. Well seeing as they are even partying about the demon leaving I think it is safe to say they still hate Naruto. The civilian responded still completely confident. So, what are your plans for Narumi? Anther council member asked. Causing Minato to smirk. If the village completely likes her still then the plan we have for her will continue. But what about your wife? She will never know besides she probably will never even figure out that I only married her to keep the Uzumaki powers and secrets in our hands to use as we wish. And with that they all left the council room never noticing the figure in the shadow. So this is what you have been up to Minato team it thought and then melded with the shadows. Meanwhile with Kushina was still depressed about her son leaving without her ever even trying to make up for all the crap they did to them. Naruto. Why did you leave us? I know we treated you horribly but you could have gave us a little bit of time for us to make it up for you. I swear I will find you and make sure I can somehow find a way for you to forgive us. Kushina thought wishfully until she saw Narumi slowly walk up to her. What is it honey? M. Mom Karama. I mean. QB wants to talk to you she said a bit nervous and with that she did a few quick hand signs and screamed out mind world fusion and then slammed her hand down on the ground. As soon as she did that red symbols spread out and surrounded both Narumi and Kushina and then they both entered into a zone that seemed to be a giant sewer with giant cage bars on the other side of the room we are here now can you tell us what you wanted to Kurama? Narumi tells the giant fox eyes that appeared when they came in. Good kid and welcome to my humble home again Kushina. Now I have brought you both here because I think you guys need to know. When me and Naruto still were together we searched around for Jutsu Scroll in the Minato's office. But instead of finding the Jutsu we found something else much more interesting. Now I can't remember it exactly but it had to do with both of you and power. So, just make sure you are careful and remember things aren't always what it seems. Now I am not giving this information to you guys because I like you so don't get me wrong I am giving it to you because Naruto-kun thought you had to know this even if he wasn't exactly happy with you guys. But, let me tell you I won't be telling you anything about Naruto and I won't be helping in any way unless you guys somehow manage to gain my trust will be hard seeing as you treated my Naruto-kun so badly. Natsu told them with a bit of a snarl. W what no way I can believe this but I might as well look I mean you never know what we will find Kushina said while secretly only planning to do it just because it is the last thing Naruto might have wanted to tell them. And with that the search began to try and find proof in the QB's words. Plus one month after Naruto left plus, Kushina and Narumi have searched for about two weeks until they found something interesting in Minato's private study. It was just a small scroll that was in a small hidden compartment on the bottom of the desk that had a scroll hidden in it. Though the fact that it was hidden didn't really bother them. What bothered them was what it said. Dear Minato, we have found that there is truly no way to find Naruto so it will be impossible for him to tell your family about the plan. Now as for the plan we need you to make sure you get your family to do what we want them to and keep them from being suspicious of anything. And above all just remember the plan. From, unnamed civilian council member. What is this? A plan that he is purposely trying to keep hidden from us Natsu was right. Narumi angrily whispered at her mother. Yes, now we need to find out what this means after all we can't get too mad at something we have no idea what it is. For all we know this could be something we are completely overreacting to. So we need proof, Kushina whispered back. And with that they doubled their effort to try and find the secret plans. Course they were getting nowhere in the house so they had to search the actual cage tower. But how are we going to search in there? Isn't there always at least one Anbu in the room at all times? Narumi asks just for her mother to just smile and say she has that covered. So, 
The next day when Minato left they entered the room and Kushina whispered in Tsuyoshi how are the clouds looking today, causing Narumi to just stare at her in confusion until a man showed up right in front of them. This man was very tall at about 6 feet 4 inches with bluish green eyes that seemed to stare into your soul, dark blonde hair that seemed to be almost brown and his mouth covered by a black scarf wrapped tightly to his wore a black anbu style shirt and pants. Though the most impressive part of his outfit was the giant sword he had going across his back. Think Zabuza's blade just more like a regular sword's look to it. But altogether he looked intimidating and very strong judging by his looks. Who is this? Narumi asks when she saw him. This is one of my old students who has always been one of my most trustworthy friends. I mean he is practically family to me. Kushina told her happily causing Tsuyoshi eyes to light up a bit in happiness. So, you are going to let us search in here? Narumi asks. Yes. As long as you make sure that it looks the same I don't want to get in trouble but I have to help Kushina Sensei when she needs it. Tsuyoshi told them in a rather neutral tone of voice. Thank you Tsui-kun Kushina says and then walks by him to begin to search. They searched for about 30 minuets thanks to Kushina's scanning jutsus until they found a secret scroll that looked suspicious. So, Kushina used her skills and seals to crack the seal and began to read after decoding it. Plans for Uzumaki Kushina and her daughter Namikaze Uzumaki Narumi. Seeing as the Uzumaki clan is so strong we must make sure that it stays in the Hidden Leaf Village. This must be done by any means possible. Right now we are working on having our top shinobi, Minato Namikaze seduce the last Uzumaki girl Kushina Uzumaki. Also know to hold the nine-tailed fox also making it necessary for us to keep her here. Kushina was shocked to say the least. Her love Minato Namikaze actually didn't love her. He only married her because of her power. She was mad to say the least. All that was on her mind was anger and screaming out how dare he do that to her. Though after a while she continued to read. New entry, we have succeeded in seducing the demon Kushina and Minato has even had two kids with her. Now that is perfect for us seeing as if they were our strong and then teach the strongest ones to become weapons for us when they become Chunin. Update. Naruto seems unfit to be a strong one and now that we had to put the demon into both of them with Kushina somehow surviving death by the extraction of the demon. Though the village needs to know what happened so seeing as Naruto seems to be the weaker of the two we will use him as the scapegoat and allow the village to torture him for payback for what the demon has done. Update. Narumi is doing great but if we are going to use her to keep the Uzumaki clan alive we need to get her to breed with the strongest upcoming ninja named Sasuke Uchiha but we will wait and hope that they get together without our help. Update. Naruto has left the village and managed to get past the border without getting caught leaving only two Uzumaki left. So, we need either Kushino or Narumi to either breed another Uzumaki kid or donate their eggs for later fertilization. After that we can use them both for strong ninja on the front lines of battle. Also, we will try and force the Uchiha and Uzumaki kids together to just breed already. Then we can get rid of the future traitor as Uchiha and keep the others. Course this needs to be done fast or else it might be too late. If worst comes to worst we can always just use a few of Donzo's minless minions. Kuchina was beyond mad after reading this course so was Narumi. The only thing they cared about for them was breeding due to the Uzumaki's power and abilities. So, right then and there they both decide that they will no longer be with Minato and try and live on their own but before that they had to get prepared. Plus one week later plus, after getting a document from the Fire Lord and enough money to buy a house and support them for a while. So she went to tell Minato the good news. Minato I have something I want to tell you, Kushina said falsely sweet. What is it? He asked curious. Slap Minato holds his check in surprise after Kushina slapped him. How dare you? You married me just to control the Uzumakis? You bastard. And even worse you plan on allowing someone to rape your own daughter. You sick bastard I don't want to ever see you again and you can touch me seeing as I have documentation allowing me to start up the Uzumaki clan's headquarters here without someone butting in namely you. Now goodbye Minato team. Kushina yelled at him and then both her and Narumi left the house leaving a shocked Minato standing there. Plus week later plus, Kushina and Narumi set up their clan which was really just a house that they shared with a few of Naruto's old friends and a few of their friends so that they all could support each other. Course with this group they don't take kindly to someone with bad intentions to come at one of them they were immediately sent away by the rest of the group thus having their clan being nicknamed the cold hearted princesses of the leaf. Course the youngest of these was Narumi who of course had to still deal with fanboys especially Sasuke who was told that if he wanted his clan to get stronger he should try and marry Uzumaki. Of course all of the other Uchiha except for about two dozen were killed by a group of random missing ninja who were privately killed off leaving no one to think otherwise. Though that didn't stop the male Uchiha to be cocky bastards even Sasuke who somehow was placed on a team with two girls and Kakashi as their sensei. Who just happened to know a lot of jutsu for Narumi and could train Sasuke to use his Sharingan. 
Wonderful I left my father's house and name and he still is trying to make me a weapon and slut me of. Damn it I wish I could have just went with Naruto when he left then I could easily make it up for him. Narumi thought with a sigh don't worry kit I will make it so you can try and gain his trust you just need to keep believing we will see him again and hold out here until you and your mother can leave this place as well. I mean that is why you put on the Uzumaki's headband and not the hidden leafs right? Natsu told her trying to cheer her up a bit. Of course all it got was a large sigh. I wonder what Naruto is doing right now. Narumi said. So do I kit, so do I. Plus leaf still plus. Hey mom why did you say Tsuyashi was like family? I mean Naruto was our family and we completely ignored him but yet you just said you treat him better. Does that mean that you treated Tsuyashi like a son while treating Naruto ni like he didn't exist? Narumi asked. This question caused Kushina to get a bit depressed but still she answered. Well, you see I was kind of acting a bit like a fangirl for Minato at that time. You see he did save me from being abducted so, ever since then I have been infatuated with him. So, I followed his every word without questioning it. Now of course a few people tried to help me get out of my fangirl ways, knowing that I became what I hate. Of course all my friends tried to help me but I pushed them all away. So, I was just following Minato for the most part though I still am at fault I plan on making it up to Naruto. Kushina mumbled out and then quickly added oh. And if you ever get like that I am going to kick your ass all around the world we don't need another mistake like this happening. Well that was, informative but you didn't exactly explain why Tsuyashi will follow practically anything you ask him to. Narumi told her mother. Oh, that I simple it is because I saved him from dying when he was young. Plus flashback plus. It was the one of our battles with the rock. Kushina who looked about the same as her older self. Except for her now wearing her battle suit which was a dark red shirt and pants with her two katanas across her back forming an X and she was with her team that was now all chunin. There was Tsuyashi was wearing the same thing he does in the future except for the scarf and was tall for his age at 5 feet 4 inches. Also, instead of a giant sword he only had a small katana that was only about 3 feet long. Beside him was Kenzo a short man at 4 feet 6 inches wearing a black shirt and white pants. He was the weakest of the group but still the most energetic usually being the one to run head first into battle. Completely unimportant character just wanted a third member in the group. And of course he had his weapon pack on his right leg. Finally beside him was Amaya the second girl in the group who was pretty tall at about 5 feet 2 inches with a B-sized breast held tightly to her body with a form with a dark pink battle kimono that showed of her beautiful body perfectly. But if you got caught being perverted around her you would feel the pain of brass knuckles. Don't know any better way to say it except she has metal gloves on her hand to increase her combat deadliness. And she also has light brown hair that simmered in the sunlight and deep hazel eyes that seemed to be filled with gentleness, even if she was vicious in battle. And altogether they made group 11 which right now was being split up to help battle a large group of enemy ninja, which quickly was done and they split up and went their separate ways. It was a big battle and Tsuyashi was battling fiercely. All around him was dead ninja until a loud boom was heard and a red light showed in the sky that made all enemies retreat course that made Tsuyashi get a bit too cocky and he accidentally turned his back on an enemy he thought was dead. Who pierced him through his stomach leaving him to fall to his knees in utter shock and pain. Now you and you fooled the man screamed out and was about to piece Tsuyashi's head from check through to the back of his head. Thankfully the man lost his head right after piercing Tsuyashi's check leaving him to fall to the ground bleeding out from the wounds. Course then he was picked up gently so he turns his head and sees his sensei Kushina sensei he whispered out weakly. Don't speak don't worry I will make sure you get healed up. Kushina told him and then carried him off to get medical attention thus saving his life. Plus flashback and plus. And that is why he almost always tries to help me whenever he can no matter what I am like. Kushina finished up her story. And after that they went out to get more stuff to get situated in their new house. There this is just a way for me to explain the relationship Tsuyashi has with Kushina and showing a reason she didn't question Minato. Now he thinks of her as his hero and wants to return the favor somehow. Plus with Naruto and gang plus. Naruto, Mai, Yoshiko, and Aoki were traveling slowly to the hidden village. Only stopping when needed, meanwhile they all were talking with each other and getting to know my more. So, that is basically my story my Naruto finished told her as he finished telling her why so many villagers called him by his nickname. All together they all were quickly adding Mai into the friendship circle. Ah, man this is nice just traveling around with people not trying to attack you. Riding around and just spending time to become friends. I mean all of these guys seem really nice especially Naruto-kun. I mean he is the one who saved me my thought happily and then looked over to Naruto. What a guy. I thought that there would never be a guy like this in the world but apparently I was wrong. I mean Naruto is kind, strong, handsome, caring, and loving I mean he is every girl's dream guy. Wait what am I thinking I can't be falling for Naruto-kun can I? 
My thought shaking her head with a blush starting to appear on her face which Naruto noticed. Hey my chan are you okay? I mean your face is turning bright red. Are you getting sick? Naruto asked her worried while he pressed on of his hands on her head to try and check her temperature making her blush even more. No, your temperature is fine just be careful okay? Oh, I know why don't you go inside the cart with the Yakine to cool off a bit Naruto told her still concerned a bit. Oh okay was all my could stutter out and then went down into the cart for some rest. Sigh. Naruto ni might be strong in a lot of areas but he sucks with reading a girl's emotions eh? Ayaki said shaking her head with a small smile. W wait w what do you mean I don't liel like Naruto kun? My stuttered out blushing even more. Course this answer just gave Ayaki a sneaky smirk oh, and I suppose that you always had that much red on your face, Ayaki said. And no I I my starts then sighs loudly. Yay, it may be possible that I might have a little crush on him. Mai says then stares at the laughing girl in front of her. What is so funny? You are so trying to deny that you were totally in love with him. Ayaki said happily. Course she got no answer from the now blushing Mai. Course after that the journey continued like normal. Plus somewhere outside of the hidden mist village plus. A group of people were in a big tent sitting around a giant table that had a bunch of maps and papers on it. Okay so how is our troops doi one of the people began until another person with a mist village's headband came running in Mei-sama. What is it? The speaker who was not named as Mei asked. We can't find Mai anywhere. The last time we saw her she was heading into one of the small town around here. We think she was seen by a traveling loyalist what? No how is this possible we need to go find my little sister. Mei screamed out. I am sorry Mei Sama but it is highly likely that she is caught or dead by now. It has just been too long. Mei is lost to us. The person said sadly and then left the tent. Meeting is done for now. So, please everyone just leave and let me mourn for the loss of my only remaining family. Mai told all of the people in the room and then waited for them all to leave. After they all left she started crying thinking that her sister was dead. Plus with all of the Leafs 12, regular gang that is in the show plus. All of them were there except for Sakura and Sasuke. Hey guys so how are you doing today Narumi asked all of them. Great mean mom has finally gave me a bingo book. Yeah I haven't really heard of one in a while so if I got the name wrong it is the book where missing ninja are posted. Today so who wants to look up a few ninja? Kiba said happily and then opened up the book. I know how about we look up that white fox guy that we talk about. I mean maybe we can finally see if he actually exists. Ino suggests and everyone agrees with her so Kiba begins looking for him and then drops the book in surprise. He actually does exist. Kiba exclaims in surprise. Wait what? Hinata and Ino said in surprise. It is right here look Kiba said and handed the book to Narumi who showed it to both of them. Name, unknown. Nickname, white fox. Age, 14. Rank, B. Village affiliation, none. Wanted by, hidden mist. Reason, killing two mist ninja. Abilities, Kenjutsu, unknown. Taiyasu, Chunin. Genjutsu, unknown. Fuinjutsu, unknown. Ninjutsu, uses gravity, rest unknown. Description, tall man who is a bit taller than six feet. He is known for wearing a white robe and everything else he wears is white. He is known by the kanji for fox on the back of his robe. He also has blonde hair, blue eyes, and three whisker-like marks on his cheeks. This guy is known to strike down people close to villages and people are advised to be careful around him. Advice for fighting, watch out for his bloodline for he is stronger with it. He is no afraid of killing people and other abilities are unknown except for him being able to use gravity to his advantage. Reward, 400,000 Rio, I am putting 100 Rio equal to 1 US dollar. This guy is impressive I mean he is our age and does not only has killed Chunin level ninja but also has a bounty. I mean what if we have to face him just how badly will we lose to him? Shino told the group in a voice that sounded like it had a hint of surprise in it. What are you saying I bet we could kick his ass, Kiba yelled out. Get real this troublesome guy could probably kill us all Shino said in his normal lazy voice. Hmm, I bet if I take care of this guy then Normi, Ino, and Hinata will all be impressed with me and wanna be with the strongest guy of our group. Kiba thought with a bit of drool coming out of his mouth. Oi. Mutt you better not be thinking about any of us girls here or we will kick your ass Ino said angrily when she saw Kiba. Which quickly brought him out of his perverted daydream. Naruto is making a name for himself that is good. That means that he is strong enough to take care of himself. Natusui told Narumi. Yay you are right about that but now he has to deal with hunter ninjas so I am still worried about him Narumi responded. Don't worry kid he will be fine I am sure Natsu told her. Plus with Kurunai plus. Kurunai is now friend s with Kushina again after a very long talk. She even was searching a bit for Naruto on her missions. 
course right now she was looking into her bingo book and saw the description for the white ghost she could only think of Naruto so this is what Naruto has turned into. Hopefully the civilian council and the Hokage, she thought and then shut her book and remembered what she heard from her investigating. Plus flashback to right after Naruto left the leaf plus, Kurenai was hiding in the council chamber corner under a high level genjutsu that only a true master of genjutsu will be able to discover and get rid of. So, she was safe from 90% of the Anbu. And as she suspected all of the civilian council in the cage came in but the shinobi council was nowhere in sight. Okay let our meeting start. One of the council members said, Okay then how is our plan affected with Naruto leaving the village Minato asked them. Well you see the fact that Naruto was just the scapegoat of all of the negative feelings people had of the demon. We have lost nothing really. I mean the village is celebrating and seem to not care that Narumi still has the power of it. So, he is still a perfect part of our plan because he still is keeping the weapon safe from them and still allowing us to easily give her to any powerful shinobi we want. Oh, and just to tell you we are completely sure that the Sasuke wants her. One of the civilian told Minato. And after that there was a long meeting that was entirely about them gaining more power in the village. Then they finally all left and Kurana finally let go of some of her genjutsu and melted into the shadows to leave the room. Plus flashback and plus, I am afraid that this village is more corrupt than any of us could guess. Thank Kami I told everyone I trust about this I mean this is something that we all need to know I think. I mean it might ruin our village but how will we get rid of it? Oh, Naruto where are you we could really use your natural smarts here. Her and I thought and then went to do her daily activities. Plus Naruto and gang plus. Uck, how far away are we now? Naruto asked seemingly bored out of his mind. Not too much farther I think we will only have a few hours of travel left to do. Yoshiko told him. Uck, really this is taking forever. Ayaki screamed out with my nodding in agreement. You see after them traveling for a full 10 hours everyone was getting a bit irritated. Still they continued until they were only about a half an hour away from where my told them the base was. So, they decided to go to sleep and finish up their trip in the morning. May so I will finally get to see you again tomorrow I wonder how you are doing. Are you sad about me being attacked? Do you think I am dead? How close to winning are we? How will you react when you find out about my feelings for Naru wait what am I thinking? Oh, well I can't wait to see you again sister. My thought and then fell asleep. In the morning they all got back on the card and went to the base. Course when they were only 5 to 10 minuets away from the base Mai told them to be careful. Why? Ayaki asked her. Well, you see the rebel bases can't really be too hidden seeing as we all know the territory so we keep a lot of guards around to protect ourselves. So, if we do meet one I will be the one talking seeing as they already know me. Mai told them. Okay then my chan I trust you Naruto said and then lied down on the roof of the cart. He trusts me. Mai thought as she smiled a bit. Oh, already daydreaming about Naruto am I? Ayaki whispered to her. Which just caused Mai to blush and just jump onto the front of the cart with Yoshiko. Course this just made Ayaki laugh as she entered the cart. Course Mai was right and it only took a little bit more travel for them to be stopped by a group of rebels. Halt why are you going this way? One of the half dozen ninja asked while holding out their katanas. So, Mai just jumped off of the cart getting surprised gasps from all of the ninja who then began to talk amongst themselves. Show us all the people in your group. One of them finally ordered. So, Ayaki. Yoshiko, and then finally Naruto came off of the cart. Course when they saw Naruto they all gasped again but this time didn't bother talking about it before they did what they decided before. Okay then you all will be walking with us to the base where we will see what Mei wants to do with you. And with that they were off. Course it didn't take long for them to reach the base and Mei was already outside waiting for them. MMI is it really you? Mei said with surprise then remembered it could be a fake so she asked Mai the question that only she and Mai know. Why was the lava always cool? Mei asked. And of course it didn't take long for Mai to say because we're the lava. And with that they both got big smiles on their faces. Okay then all of you come with me Mei said and then brought them all into the council room that was at that moment empty. And right after they were out of the public view Mai soon found herself in a bear hug. Mai I thought that I lost you I was so worried, Mei said through tears of joy. Sis you are holding me way too tight, I can't breathe. And is this how you want your first meeting with these guys to go? Mai asked which got me immediately focused on the new people and started to act like a leader again. Though I do thank you for bringing my sister back why did you come here? Who are you and what do you want? Mei asked when she suddenly got serious. So of course Yoshiko and Ayaki stepped up to talk first even if they were a bit nervous. Well Mei-sama my name is Yoshiko and this is my daughter Ayaki and we own a wandering oddities shop and always wanted to set up in a town. So, 
We were hoping that if we give you all the supplies you want from us then we would want a building to set up a shop in the village when you win, Yoshiko said with a small bow at the end. Hmm, well we will have to see what you have and talk it over but that should be doable. Mei told them with a smile. Then Naruto walked up my name is Naruto Uzikijin due to my chan telling me about what you are fighting for I find it very valiant. So, if you would allow me to I wish to join the fight. Naruto told her. Ah. Really well we could always use new people so I will talk with the group about you joining. Mei told him. Okay then we'll talk to all of you again tomorrow seeing as it is getting late. You may sleep in your car tonight, which I assume you do anyways. Mei tells them and they all nod and were about to walk away when all of the council came in. Hmm so this is the crew that brought her in eh? Well anyways we are here for the meeting Mei Sama one of them tells her. Okay then we will see you tomorrow have fun in your meeting Naruto tells her and then they all walk out the door. Course it was then that they all saw the kanji on his back and it finally clicks. You are the wit fox? They all say in complete surprise. Um, yeah I am called that now I guess though I don't know why it is such a big deal. Ah, uh, well see you guys in the morning. Naruto told them then walked out of the tent. So, that is the white fox? He doesn't look as scary as I thought he would. One of the council says confusing my. What do you mean? Naruto-kun's known all over is really good why would it be scary? My asked them. My, you weren't here so you don't know this but he was just put into our bingo book for killing two of the loyalists. I mean even if they were not on our side we still don't know why he did it so we should be careful around him. One of the council said. What no he can be trusted I mean he only killed the two loyalists who were chasing me. That is why Naruto kun is in the book. My told them. Really then I think we should take the time to think about these new people and what they want. And when everyone agreed they too left leaving only Mei and Mai in the room. It is so good to see you again Mei Mai said truly happy. Yes as it is to see you but what I want to know is why it is Naruto kun. I mean you never called a guy kun in your entire life. I mean even the ones you were friends with you don't call kun so why call H? Oh, I see what it is. My little Mai has gotten her first crush, Mei said with a big smile causing Mai to look like a tomato. I I it is not like that I am just really thankful for all he has done. I don't know like him. Mai managed to tell her sister who just rolled her eyes. Sure you don't now why don't we tell each other about what we missed but more importantly what those people are like, Mei said and with that they spent the night talking. Plus with the rebel base plus, everyone was starting to wake up when Naruto and company were back in the council meeting. So, we have thought over each of your wants and have come to a decision. One of the council said then let Mei say the rest. Okay for your supplies case Yoshiko we have decided that we will need more businesses after we win so we have decided to go with that deal. Mei told a now happy Yoshiko. You hear that Ayaki we have a home. He told his daughter who was just as happy. Which in turn put a smile on everyone face due to their reaction. Course after a while Mei continued as for you Naruto if you join we must know your skills and other information. Also, we will need you to be watched over until we are sure we can trust you. Plus, if you will allow us we will like to ask you a question that you don't need to answer for you to help us, so will you let us? May asks, yeah those ideas are fine with me and yes I will answer the question seeing as now that you are the leader of the rebellion I must follow you, eh? Naruto tells them with a big smile on his face. He is smart. I mean he automatically tries to get on my good side with a bit of clever speech. May thinks then quickly asks the question they all had on their mind quite right so our question is, are you the actual white fox? May asks the question that was on all their minds since they first saw him. Yes. I am called that by many people but my real name is Naruto not White Fox. Naruto tells them with a little bit of a stern expression. By the way they aren't sure they are going to win they are just that motivated that they think no one can stop their dedication. So, yay they are just hoping they will win. Just clearing that up. Yay, we need to keep him. Imagine all of the publicity we will get if word slips out that he is fighting for us all of the council members thought to themselves hoping that more people would support them if they have a hero of the civilian world with them. As we thought. Now that we need to talk about the fact that you are in the bingo book. One of the council said causing Mai, Naruto Ayaki, and Yoshiko to gain extremely confused looks. What are you talking about sis? Mai finally asked Mei. Well you see Naruto-san here is marked as a B-ranked Rouge ninja that is wanted for doing something against the cage we are fighting here. Mei told them. But why would they be going against Naruto-kun? Oh wait of course. It was the ninja he killed to save me, Mai said suddenly realizing why. Oh, so that is why. Then we must thank you for saving our leader sister than Fox San one of the random council told Naruto. Oh, it was no prob, wait did you just say leader sister? Naruto asked surprised. 
Yes my is my sister so I must thank you Naruto Sanmei said happily man I managed to save one of the or the only one that really matters to the leader of the rebels. Man imagine what could have happened if the cage got their hands on her. Naruto though when he heard this. Yay Naruto is still a good guy so he doesn't even think that he could be asking for favors because of it. Wow, then you are welcome though I really had no idea it was your family Mei-san. I just helped her because those guys were sickening even to be around. So, I wasn't going to let them overpower a girl, that is for sure. Naruto told her firmly. That look could he really mean that I wonder? Maybe he really is a pretty good guy. Not to mention he is a looker. If he really did mean that he did it out of the kindness of his heart he might just be the perfect guy for Mai Mai. Though I still need to make sure before I allow it. I mean even she is my sister I can't let just anyone date her. Mei thought happily. Okay then now we move on to skills. So what would you say your skills are and what do you possibly have to help our cause Naruto-san? One of the council asked the question they all wanted to know. Ah. Uh, of course my skills would probably be all at mint to high tuning level but I haven't really fought too much for a while now so you may want to test me on that later on. But as for special things I have mint Onamikaze's two special jutsus. Also, I have been studying in seals for quite a while and would call myself a seal master though I have yet to be tested on that as well. Of course the most important thing is that I have a bloodline called Rinnegan at my disposal. Naruto told them calmly but still left the council in utter shock. WW wait you were telling us that you have the legendary thought to be imaginary Rinnegan? Mei stuttered out in completely shocked that someone could actually have it. No way you gotta be kidding me can you show it to us? One of the council members said in disbelief. Causing Naruto just to shrug his shoulders and activate his Rinnegan. Wow it actually exists. Is all they could think as they saw this. Course even Mai and the others were surprised by it seeing as this was the first time he really used seeing as he never uses it unless he has to. Eventually Mei got out of her shock and told Naruto his first mission. Okay then don't take this the wrong way but you will be watched by our other ninja until we can completely trust you. Mei told Naruto. Fair enough I guess I mean in this world you can't really trust anyone completely eh? Naruto responds to her. Yay that is true, but anyways we will test you later but right now I have a mission for you to go on. You see we are running out of food right now so we need to get some villages around this area. Cows they really don't want to help us seeing as they are unsure if we are going to be able to win. But, if the legend of the white fox who is known to save villagers is on our side they might be more willing. So, please go and help the squad we are sending out to go for that. Mei told him. Hi Mei Sama Naruto said and then went with the ninja that showed up to prepare to go with them. Course it didn't take long seeing as Naruto has yet to settle down so he still carried all of his stuff on him. The only thing he really did was make sure his robe was clearly showing the fox on the back so that the people could clearly see who he was. And soon he met his teammates for this mission, who were a bunch of random ninja with nothing really special about them so they just left quickly to go to a bunch of random towns try and get supplies. Hello there people of this lovely village we are here as agents of the group of people brave enough to go against the corrupt cage. We are here today with our newest member and perhaps you have heard of him. Please welcome the white fox hero of civilians to our cause. Now as you can see our group is fighting for a very noble cause. So, we ask for your support. Though we will not ask for new soldiers to fight for us. Instead we ask simply for supplies you would generously give to support our cause. So, please help us and remember we fight not for just us but everyone in the mist. One of Naruto's teammate calls out in each village they went to trying to get as many people to donate as possible. And of course it did work somewhat. But even with the white fox being there the people still were hesitant on showing their support seeing as they didn't want to face the corrupt cage's wrath. Though they still got a decent amount of supplies. Okay then that is all the spots we could go to that are safe so let's head back. The leader of Naruto's groups told them and they all nodded and jumped onto the caravan and started back to the base. When they got there they quickly took stock of all of the new stuff and put it away. Then they went to Mei to tell her how it went. Mei Sama we are back with the supplies the leader said then gave her the list to look over. Okay thank you. All of you except Naruto may leave. May told them and they all nodded and went away except for Naruto. Okay Naruto we have a tent set up. It is in the western distract of the barracks. Mai will show you where it is won't you Mai? May told him then smiled at her sister. Of course Nisa and Mai said and they both quickly left and went to Naruto's new tent. And here it is Mai said happily and then with a quick thanks Naruto got set up in his tent. Plus two days later plus. Yay Naruto simply went on supply missions because of how he was known as a hero to the civilians for two days. Plus, they watched him during these missions to see if he was really wanting to help them. That is why it took so long for him to get his test. Okay Naruto today you will be testing your skills against one of our chunin so please meet us on training ground 3 in an hour. Mate told Naruto who nodded then left to prepare. 
you really seem like you are more than a Chunin Naruto. So, without you knowing we are putting you against a Jonin instead just so that we get to see your true powers. I mean if you really are a Chunin then we will tell you we made a mistake. But, really come on we all know you are hiding something so just show it to us already. Mei was thinking after he left. My get me a Tuski san please Mei asked and her sister left as well. Huh, why am I getting him he is a Jonin. Ah. Well Mei will tell me eventually I am sure. I mean there is no way she is trying to not give Naruto-kun a chance, right? My thought then ran off to get him. Plus training ground 3 plus. Okay then are you ready for your fight Naruto-san? Mei said when both him, her the council, and a few other people, guards, my. Yes, my Sama Naruto told her. Okay good then let me introduce your opponent Atsuki Mei said pointing at the Chunin. Atsuki was a 5 feet 10 inches muscular man. He had short straight brown hair that just slightly went past his hairline. His eyes were dark brown as well that showed an eerie mischievous glint. On his chin was a cross-shaped scar from a battle of the past. On his back was his favorite weapon two short blades that were on either side of his hip both in deep red guards. Not to mention that his serious demeanor made him a fearsome opponent who earned his rank through pure hard work. Are you ready as well Atuski san May asked him as well only to get a nod as her response. Okay then let me explain the rules. You two will be fighting for three hours or until one of you is knocked out, to tier to continue, forfeit. Though forfeiting will make your chances of joining us slim. Or are put into a situation where you would have died if we were fighting for real. Is that clear? Mei said getting a nod from each of them then fight. Mei finished chopping the air with her hand. And then they were off. Naruto and Atusuki ran at each other quickly swords drawn. Soon enough the clang of their swords clashing was heard several times. Eventually they slammed into each other neither gaining any ground so eventually they both just jumped away and slid back a few feet. You are a pretty good kid Atuski said with a smirk. Yay you to Naruto said happily. And then they both ran back at each other. Naruto slashed at Atuski's stomach only for his sword to be blocked by one of Atuski's swords while the other slashed at his head which Naruto quickly ducked under it. Course he just barely dogged it seeing as a few strands of hair were cut off his head. They had a battle using their swords while neither one was really gaining any ground in it. So, they both put them away and began to use ninjutsu. So, Naruto quickly went through hand signs and then screamed out Suten, Mijarapa, water release, violent water wave, then quickly shot out a jet of water at Atuski, who jumped to the side and quickly called out his own jutsu Kyrgakur no jutsu, hidden miss technique, causing the entire arena, not around spectators I should add due to next part, to be covered in a thick mist. What are you going to do now Naruto? You can't see me, and can't even sense my chakra. See how it is to go against a master of our village's arts? Atuski's voice said from seemingly all directions around Naruto. Course he was slightly surprised when Naruto just laughed a bit ah, now what will I ever do there is mist all around me and I can't see. What should I ever do I mean it is not like I can just use it to my advantage can I? Naruto then said in a voice laced with sarcasm. Then he quickly jumped out of the mist high into the air and then screamed out Kangeki Hano Jutsu, inspiration wave technique causing electricity to be launched down into the mist shocking Atuski who couldn't get out of the mist quick enough. Soon enough the mist cleared showing Atuski on the ground burned all over with a spark of electricity coming from his body every now and then. Checkmate Naruto said with a smile, until he was launched back by a shark slamming its nose onto his gut with Atuski who was not as burnt holding his last hand sign saying Suten, Sweek out and no jutsu, water release, water shark projectile technique. Said jutsu sent Naruto through two trees and slammed him into a third. Ow, you sneaky bastard Naruto complained as he rubbed his back and then stood up to fight again. Oh, what is the matter can't take it. Then let's have me end this for you Atuski mocked then ran at Naruto holding his sword so that they pointed behind him. Hey, I was about to say the same thing to you. And with that Naruto also charged at him. They were about to collide when a bell was heard going off throughout the field. Well wasn't that an interesting match. Let me thank both of you for giving us that amazing show. Now what level would you put Naruto at Atuski? Mei asked happily after she jumped into their arena and began to walk over to them. Course this question brought Atuski into a mental review of the battle for a while until he finally answered. From this battle I think we all can say Naruto is a strong ninja. So, here is how I would place his skills. Then took out a marker and paper and started writing. So, they waited for about a minute and then he showed them all what he wrote. Naruto is a K skills, ninjutsu, mid chunin, not exact due to lack of information. Taiyas too. Unknown. Genjutsu, unknown. Kenjutsu, high chunin to low jonin. Bloodline skill, unknown. Seeing this everyone else nearly laughed at how little this actually showed. 
course Mei just sighed and then turned to Naruto well I guess we will just have to see how you do in various missions she told him and then left with her sister. See you later Naruto I hope we can fight again Atusuki said with a smile then left as well leaving Naruto to walk back to his den to rest up. Plus a while later plus it has been a while since Naruto had his first mission and training session. And after that he spent his days training, on missions, or with his friends. Altogether he worked hard and now was probably closer to Jonin in level but decided not to take Mei's offer of making him one and work through the ranks with his now best friend Mai, who wasn't even a Jinan yet due to the war starting on her last year in school. He also had his bounty increased and was now in a rank rouge ninja who is still wanted for attacking the hidden mist villages ninja. And right now he was in a tent with his friend Mai listening to what their next mission will be. Okay then my chan Naruto-kun right now we have decided to attack the hidden village directly. Now this will be tough but what I need you to do is very important to the battle okay? Mei said then continued after getting a nod from both of them good. Your mission is to infiltrate the Janan barracks before the battle begins and block them off from the rest of the village. Now this must be done so we have future ninja to train. Though be careful because not only will you be facing attacks from enemy ninja in the village but also from the very people you are blocking. You see we have no idea how many children are under his complete control. So, you and the other people I am sending to help must be extremely careful. Now here is all of the people helping you please get them all ready and tell the first person on this list that they are in charge okay? May told them making them nod then open the scroll and see about 20 names. After they looked they quickly said their farewells and used Shunshine no Jutsu, body flicker technique, first and last time I will say it this way, to quickly notify the people on the list. And soon enough they were all at the entrance of the base ready to leave. Then with a quick talk to the rest of the people left for the hidden village a half an hour before the rest of the resistance. Plus at Koona plus. At Koona nothing really was out of the ordinary. Narumi was on yet another D-ranked mission that this time required her to get the devil cat for the daimyo's wife, again. Man why did we have to catch this stupid cat again, Narumi said in frustration. Now. Now Narumi these missions have to be done for the good of the village so be happy you can help your home Kakashi said not knowing what else to say to her seeing as he never liked D-ranked missions either. Cut the crap sensei we all know you hate this as much as us, Sasuke said and then turned to Narumi. But, if you wanted to enjoy your days more you could always go out with me and become my first girlfriend. And then gave a lusty look at her still developing body causing the pink haired girl behind them to get jealous at Narumi's luck. No thanks team I would date a dog before you. Narumi said with a hint of disgust showing in her voice. I wish he would stop asking me out I have said no enough. I mean I am one of the few girls our age that realize he wouldn't love us at all and only would use us to breed for his clan then forget all about us. I mean really I still don't understand why the other girls would want to go for that kind of sad life. But there is no way I am going to fall that low to allow that to happen to me. Narumi thought remembering exactly why she hates his advances and his fangirls. Then looked up into the air thinking about random things until they reached the cage's room that had a view of the forest beyond the walls of the village. Sai I wonder what is going on out there past these walls confining Minarumi thought as she was ignoring the mission debrief her sensei was giving. After a while everyone was situated for the war to begin and were broken up into teams. With Naruto and Mai's team they had a dozen people with a random Jonin in charge of them. And with Mei she had only a half a dozen of the best ninja the rebels had seen as their target was the cage directly. When everyone was ready to leave Mei began her speech. Okay now we have gone a long way so far and now it is finally time for us to finish this. Let us attack with all of our strength and we can't lose. So come on let us begin so we can claim our victory, Mei said to her group then heard them all cheer. And with that they all went as a group to the village then split up to do each of their separate missions. Plus Naruto and his group plus Naruto and everyone else in the group entered the ninja school surprising all of the people inside of it. Ok people this area is now under the rebel army anyone who disagrees with us come forward to die. One of the Chunin yelled out into the building. Of course most were unsure what to do because they didn't like their cage much but they didn't really think the rebels would win so they just pretended that it was a normal day and ignored the group. Though a few teachers and watchers did come at the group though they were quickly brought down by the team. And all is set here man that was easy. Mai said happily until they saw that ninja surrounded the school. Yay but keeping it is the hard part Naruto said and then they all went into battle the opponents. Plus Mai and her team plus. Mai and the rest of their group ran through town avoiding as much of the battles as they could until they finally entered the cage tower which had a few of his guard. Crap, leave them to me just keep going half of Mei's team yelled out then started to attack. With that all the rest ran past the battle and started heading up to the top of the tower. Course they had to dodge a few traps but finally they entered the cage's room. The cage was known as Yagura who appeared to be about 30 male with a young, childlike face and body structure. He also had a head of messy, light grey hair, 
pink pupilless eyes and what seems to be a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye, all the way down his cheek. He was small in stature and wears a gray, sleeveless shirt with the Karagakur forehead protector attached to the front, short-sleeved mesh armor over which he also wears a green poncho along with a turquoise sash around his waist, paired with a green apron over his pants. He wears a pair of brown boots, and on his back he carries a staff-like pole weapon with uneven-sized hooks with a green flower on the larger end who is in a dark room with several ponds of water all around and an extravagant desk, not going to put a description just thing of it as a fancy desk you could only buy when you had a lot of money to burn. This person description brought to you by the Naruto wiki. So, these are the rebels that have been pestering me. Well thank you for coming so now I can kill all of you at one time, he yelled and then attacked the group leaking a demonic amount of killer intent, this will be key from now on. Then they began their fight as well. Plus Naruto plus. Naruto was fighting two people wielding two kunai with his team fighting all around him. Which was useful seeing as one of the people died to a random kunai flying through the air. While the other was killed by a rebel falling. So, Naruto quickly moved to his next enemy and continued doing this until he finally was held back by a jonin that went through some quick hand signs and then screamed out Sutan, Tepodama water release, gunshot, then shot a blast of water directly at Naruto at high speeds. Who just barely dogged it. Damn this guy won't be easy Naruto thought and then began in a large kenjutsu battle with the jonin. Plus Mai plus. Mai was breathing pretty hard after fighting her 10th person. Damn I am exhausted already. I mean I might be around chunin level but expecting me to fight so many ninja is ridiculous. I mean really how am I supposed to kill them when most of them are stronger than me. Mai complained but still took a few solid pills and got back into the match. And ended up fighting a female chunin that was rushing to their group. Come on let's see how well you can fight demon the Chunin spat out at Mai. Well you will see soon enough Mai said with a smirk then quickly screamed out lava release, lava globs and tried to melt the Kunoichi. And with that they began their match. Plus whole village plus. Altogether the village and rebels were about even with neither side gaining much ground. For while the village had more ninja most of them wanted to rebel as well and the fact the rebels have nothing to lose. So, really they were all waiting for the cages battle to end to determine the winner. So. Basically the whole war would be based upon the victor between the head of each groups. Plus my plus. My and her opponent were pretty evenly matched with neither side getting too much damage. Though eventually the pure taijutsu fight changed when Mai's enemy screamed out water release, water whip and had a strip of water form starting from two of their fingers. They then slashed at Mai and watched happily as it went straight through her neck decapitating her. Too easy she said a bit cockily until she saw the dead body poof away into white smoke and heard someone jump right behind her and was about to turn around until she felt a kunai pierce straight through her heart killing her instantly. Thank Kami Naruto taught me that thought of sweating Mai as she stood over her now dead enemy. Plus Mei and group plus. Mei was having a tough time with Yagura. Seeing as he was a Jin Churiki he had insane stamina and chakra. Not to mention all the jets as he knew he was an opponent who seemed nearly impossible to beat. Though that didn't stop them all from trying. So, they fought as hard as they could but eventually they found themselves pinned down behind several stone walls they made using a jutsu. Crap, what are we going to do? One of Mei's protectors asked Mei. He does have a good point. I mean there is not enough of us to face a Jinchuriki. Though we have to. We are all that can be spared from the other areas. So what are we going to do? Wait, that might just work. My thought then began to tell her team the plan. Plus Naruto's battle plus. Naruto and the Jonin were in a major kenjutsu battle with both sides bleeding from minor cuts on their bodies. Hey, kids you're pretty good the Jonin said with a sadistic smile. You too Naruto tells him. Wish I didn't have to kill you but you were in our way so see you in hell he said happily then threw out four explosive notes at Naruto feet. Boom. And the kid has done the join and said with a evil smile. Wait w what? H how? And no that is impossible the Jonin said in total disbelief of what he saw. In the middle of the fire was a boy with his robe with not a bit of ash on him. His skin wasn't black at all but seemed to be steaming. Course the thing that scared him the most was the boy's eyes that seemed to change from the blue they were to something much more dangerous looking. Immediately even with all the training he received he cringed back in fear. What kind of demon is he? He walks out of the fire completely unharmed with power radiating off of him. This is not good. He couldn't help but think in his mental breakdown. While he was in his breakdown he didn't notice the boy come up to him and quickly stab him between the ribs hitting the heart for a quick death. Dang I gotta be more careful. He nearly killed me. Naruto thought as he looked down at his hardest opponent yet. Plus how Naruto did it plus. When Naruto sees that there are explosives around him he quickly did a jutsu that he borrowed from his mother before he left. As he did he quickly whispers out water armor. Plus, 
just to make sure he uses his bloodline to push all of the explosion away from him slightly, reducing the damage he would have got down to the complete destruction of his water armor and some slight burns on his skin. And thankfully his clothing had repair seals on them which kept them from burning up. Naruto was happy with his win and was catching his breath until he saw something land in the lack leaking key in a massive quantity. Plus May plus, May and her group got prepared for their plan. Each of her guards went to a different side of Yagura forming a triangle around him. Then they started to do a bunch of complex hand signs all perfectly in time with each other. What are you fools doing? You think I will let you complete any jutsu you are trying to do? Well think again. Yagura yelled out then tried to attack the one in front of him. But before he could move more than a few feet he heard Mei yell out lava release, obsidian coffin. Then she covered him in a quickly cooling lava ball that burned him until it cooled into hard obsidian that completely covered Yagura leaving only his face out of it. I think you will be letting us finish, so, how about you just sit there and let us finish? Mei tells him with a falsely sweet voice. Course Yagura wasn't happy with being captured and slowly began to break free from his confinement. Soon enough cracks began to appear on the outside of the rock. May we still need time. We are only halfway through the seals now. Please keep him from moving for a bit longer. One of May's group called out to her while still doing hand signs. I know but he is too strong I don't know how much longer I can keep the cage around him May told him while sweating from the exertion of holding the now crumbling rock together with pure chakra. Though she was losing chakra fast, eventually the strain became too much and May couldn't hold the stone anymore and it quickly crumbled releasing an angry Yagura. Bastards die already, Yagura yelled out in complete rage then charged at the man in front of him. Who was freaking out because he couldn't move still due to the fact he was still doing the group jutsu. He was about to die with Yagura getting closer and closer. Water release, destroying water's capture zone was heard finally and just in front of all of May's companions a wall of dense water was formed into walls making a cube around Yagura except for half of his right arm which held a kunai mere inches from the man he was attacking. Of course he was forced to pull his arm back when he felt the waters start to eat into his flesh. Though the man that he attacked was still completely terrified and fell to the ground shaking in fear of the fact that he was mere seconds from death there. It is over Yagura this is your end. You know that this is the hidden mist village's ultimate capturing jutsu. It can't be broken by anything, nor can you go through it or its pH level will destroy everything you are. The only thing you can do is wait for it to kill you as it closes in on you. Goodbye you worthless corrupt cage, May said and with that all the rebels present began to will the waters to shrink down making the cube smaller. None of them felt any regret as they saw the soon to be dissolved ninja look around in utter shock. Meanwhile the cage and the cube had many things going on in his mind as he saw the cold eyes of his enemies look down upon him in his final moments of life. No. This can't be happening. I was meant to rule the world and finally rid it of all of the evil bloodline users. Why do they stop me? Don't they know that those demons will just kill all you care about just like they killed my life by sealing a bijou inside of me? No, I must stop all bloodline users from living. I must have my revenge. Bijou give me your power I must win. Yaguri yelled out into his mind only to hear a deep laugh come through his mind. You foolish mortal you are just as weak as all the others. Why should I help you when I can now free myself? You see the sealer that put me inside of you only made it so I was held back by your mind. So. As long as it was strong I couldn't break free. But, now that you are weaker and these fools just wrecked your sense of power just weakened the seal enough for me to completely free myself. I can finally squash all of you pathetic mortals like the bugs you are. The demonic turtle screamed out then destroyed the seal and leaked all of his chakra out completely taking over Yagura. Which destroyed his very mind and soul leaving only his body which was quickly being morphed back into the turtle's likeness. Finally thanks to you pathetic humans I am free to do what I want again. Now as your reward I will make sure you are the first humans I killed the Bija told Mei and her group scaring them with the amount of ki he was leaking out. Then using all of his force he completely destroyed the water walls by evaporating it with the amount of demonic energy he was using. Then quickly destroyed the room they were in with a loud boom and jumped into the nearby lake. Where by molding the molecules around him he quickly built himself a new body and prepared to destroy the very village that trapped him once and for all. Plus village as a whole plus, every ninja was still fighting until they heard a giant explosion coming from the cage tower making them shiver at the key that came from the hole. Then they saw something that they wish they never did. A humanoid figure leaking key and blood red chakra leapt out of the room and landed into the lake. Then after a large burst of that chakra came the thing that they all feared. The three-tailed turtle Bija standing in the river with all of its key filling the air around the village. They were about to die and they all knew it. So, they decided that if they were they would die trying. So, 
With that in mind they all ran up to the lake and prepare for what could be their final battle. Plus lake plus, everyone rebel and loyalist alike were at the lake looking at the turtle in front of them with fear evident in their eyes. Soon Nardo and Mai saw May run up to the lake as well and quickly ran to her as all the ninja began to fight the beast. Sis what happened? I thought you were supposed to beat him in the cage tower Mai asked. We did but that brought out the bijou allowing it to come out of the seal and attack the world again. Now the only thing we can do is figure some way to beat it, like another seal, May said then they both turned to Naruto with a questioning look. Um, yeah I think I could beef up my evil containment seal enough to capture him I just need two things which are both hard to get. Time and a living human body to seal the beast into, Naruto said with sadness evident in his voice. W what you need a human? No, there must be another way please tell me you're joking, Mai said making Naruto just look down even more in sadness. I am sorry my chan it is the only way, Naruto mumbled out barely hearable. Fine if that is what it takes we can't change it. We don't have another plan. The only problem is how are we going to pick which person will become the Jin Shuriki, Mei said and then they all thought about it for a bit and couldn't think of any way to do this easily. I will volunteer a female voice was heard. Which made all of them turn to where the voice came from. Where they saw a girl about the same age as Mai was. Who seemed to be a bit small for her age being about 4 feet 10 inches and B cup breasts. She looked like she was training all her life due to the fact she had the body of an athletic runner. She also had light blue hair that ran to her shoulders, with the bangs of her hair partially covering up her pink eyes that only had a very small pupil. So small it was practically invisible. And you would be? May asks her suspiciously. Course that was until Mai ran up to the girl and gave her a hug. Megumi-chan I thought I would never see you again. May called out. You know her? May asks her sister. Yea I know her. She is the youngest cousin of Yagura. She also was one of the only ones that he still remotely cared about. So she saw all that happened to the bloodline users and was sickened by it. Now I know that you don't trust her because of that but she actually is the one that allowed so many bloodline users to escape her cousin's clutches. She even helped me escape and I would have gotten away without a problem if I didn't freak out and accidentally go the wrong way out of the village. Oh, and just so you know I trust her completely. Mai said with a quick smile. What she said is true my cousin was good man until he started having a dream of a man with red eyes. Soon after that he attacked the bloodline users and started this war. Now I felt sorry for them so I wanted to try and stop him but he was too far gone. So, all I could do was help the people he attacked. And right now I have a way for my family to repay the village for all the trouble it caused. No other family needs to carry that horrible burden please let me so I can at least have a chance to repay the bloodline users for all of the crap my cousin did. Megumi said with desperation clear in her voice. She truly wanted to become the sacrifice for this. I believe her but it is up to you. Now for the seal to work the demon needs to be weak and so work on that while I start on the seal. Now if you excuse me I want to get this done as fast as I can Naruto said simply and then sat down took out a scroll, ink, and a pen and began to write his seal. While of course May went through the possibilities. She really wants to be the one to do it I can see that is true. But can we trust her not to use its power for revenge? Well my and Naruto trust her so that says something because they don't trust people all that easily. So, what should I do? Hmm, I guess I will just have to go with my gut on this one. May thought okay guys Naruto our seal master is working on a seal for this giant turtle so right now we just have to weaken him and not do too much damage to our village. Now I don't care which side you were on right now so unless you want this turtle to beat you I suggest you do the same. Now all troops attack this bijou. Show him the true power of the mist, May screamed out to the entire group and they all began to fight for their home, family, and very lives. Plus two hours later plus, I finally finished. Naruto screamed out in joy as he went up to May and Mai. Really now do you think he is weak enough for the seal to work yet? May asked Naruto. Hmm, he does seem weaker but he still could use a bit more but I will do that. But for this I only need the person that is becoming the human sacrifice to come with me. The rest of the people around will just get in the way. So, if you could please get everyone off of the lake so I can begin. Naruto told her politely and waited with the giant seal scroll he had strapped horizontally across his back. Okay then I have picked. She tells him and then whispers the name to Naruto so he is the only one to hear. After she finished he nodded and then grabbed the person and walked onto the slowly clearing lake. You ready? Naruto asks the person and got a nod of approval in return. Then let me begin Naruto said then began the steps to seal the beast. The first thing Naruto did was send a bunch of shadow clones to pester the turtle. Now all I need you to do right now is show me your stomach. Naruto told the person who quickly complied. So, 
Naruto began to write down a complex seal system on the stomach leaving barely any of it not covered with a kanji or mark of ink. After Naruto did this he pumped a bit of chakra into his eyes to activate the Rinnegan and walked towards the turtle. Naruto eventually started running and made it up the back of the turtle to about the center of the beast and began to do hand signs. Demigods pull Naruto screamed out and then slammed both of his hands onto the turtle's back and jumped off. As soon as Naruto's feet touched the water he ran back to the soon-to-be Jinchuriki's position. Soon after he did he slammed his hands together and activated his jutsu. Which brought some of the stones around the lake to slam onto the demon in the water. After a while the demon was covered in a couple layers of stones which only made it matter. Foolish mortal you think this small amount of dirt will hurt me? The demon said to Naruto mocking him. No, that was just to slow you down Naruto said with a smile then took off the scroll and then threw it onto the turtle's now dirt covered shell and activated it by pumping chakra into it. After it was activated the seal's kanjis moved and increased to cover the entire beast and then stopped. After they stopped the beast started fighting the seals that bound the stone to him and was slowly weakening it. Course while he was doing that Naruto ran over to his sacrifice and slammed his chakra covered fingers into the seal on their stomach while saying devil's warrior's final burial. After he did that the demon seals started to turn red and move over to the person. When they made it the seals connected and red chakra started to travel the seal path for what seemed like hours. Till finally it stopped and the seals separated leaving the new Jinchuriki to pass out on Naruto and a barely visible demon. Naruto then looked at his work and saw the truly interesting seal. The seal was a giant circle with a swirl going to the belly button. Around the circle was a bunch of symbols with four of them leading up to smaller circles with swirls. After he was done with looking at his work he walked up to what was left of the turtle and began to talk. Too bad my seal couldn't take all of your chakra I guess. Thankfully I have a way to get rid of the rest. You see all of it is now going into your drainage seal where it will overload it and explode leaving all the chakra to disperse in the air. So goodbye, Naruto said then activated the seal and sunshine to where Mei and Mai was. Boom. That noise was heard in villages all around the hidden mist and all there was nothing left of the turtle just water raining down to the ground that was brought into the air from the force of the explosion causing everyone to cheer at the defeat of the turtle. Plus days later plus, the council had worked very hard starting up the reconstruction and weeding out the still loyal ninja all around the village but have finally came to the hardest part of the rebuild, deciding a new cage. They thought long and hard on it. And had many meetings about it until they finally reached a decision. So. They gathered all of the village around the still damaged cage tower and told them the news of their decision. People of the village may I present you your god I'm Mizukage Mei Terumi. One of the council members yelled out and then allowed Mei to walk onto the balcony to give her speech. We of the Hidden Mist Village have had a tough time for a while now with the last cage in the war going on. Now while you all know that I was one of the people to start the war I assure you that it will bring in a new era for all of us. With the war over we will rebuild our village and make it even better than before. And soon enough we will become the strongest village of this world. Mei told the village causing people to cheer for her as she basked in it. Plus next day plus, Naruto, Mai, and Naruto's newest friend Megumi were in the makeshift office on the floor below the original office and were waiting to find out what Mei wanted. Welcome Naruto-kun, Mei-chan, Megumi-chan I have brought all three of you to my office to give you your ranks. For Naruto we give you the rank Genin just because we have a plan for you that needs you to be that rank. Mei said tossing Naruto a hit I ate which he accepted not really caring which rank he got. Now for you too I want you to finish up this year's schooling with all the other kids seeing as neither one of you graduated. Oh, and Megumi please don't use your Bijou's chakra. I am sure Naruto has told you the reason not to. Mei said and they both accepted that and all three were about to leave until Mei called for Naruto to stay. Naruto I know you are stronger than a Janan but we must show that we are still strong. So, you will be on a Janan team for the sole reason of doing great in the Chunin exams where you will be brought up to Chunin, or maybe even Jonin. Mei said seriously and then gained an angry look that slightly scared Naruto as she continued. Also the council has voted that your Rinnegan is to be made into a village bloodline. So, in order for your clan to increase in size quickly you must take multiple wives. She finished then looked at Naruto checking his reaction to this and was actually surprised by it. Naruto had a look of horror on his face as he exclaimed what he was thinking. What? How am I supposed to even date one girl when she will automatically think I just want her for breading? This is just great I will never find someone to start a family with. Naruto complained which made Mei laugh a bit. Well Naruto any normal man would have been really happy with that but then again you never were really normal. Though as for your concern I don't think will be all that hard. Seeing as some girls can be just as, interested, in guys as guys can with them. And I know for the fact that you have a lot of fan clubs already beginning to form for all you have done. Mei said happily but then got her serious face again. 
But if you get perverted I will melt your balls she said making Naruto turn completely white. HHI Naruto said then ran out of the room as fast as he could and then went all the way to the house he was sharing with Yoshiko's family. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.